So where the fuck is everybody else? Nowhere to fucking be found. Congratulations, we're demonetized. I don't give a shit at this point. You know no what? one is doing anything, and for years, I've routinely said, you need to stand up for yourself and tell these people to back off, and you won't do it. Maybe you guys will, but most people won't. I thought if Joe Biden wins, then this whole country is going to be is going to go so far woke so fast your head will spin. By the way, this is in June, guys. This is in June. And no one will do anything about it. But if Trump wins, the insane woke people will will start some kind of civil war. I think that they'll try. No, 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 listen, listen. If Biden wins, then all of these conservatives and all of these people who are complaining about the stuff will sit on their hands and say, "Oh, well, you know, I don't like it." And they'll do nothing about it. Nothing will happen. No, you're these conversations have been happening in circles like the intellectual dark web okay. and on shows like Joe Rogan, where the biggest podcast in the world routinely rags the biggest on the podcast in the world is completely unable to stop the rapid transformation of society and the destruction of our founding fathers and our and, and the general who defeated the Confederates. Dude. Even though the Joe Rogan podcast has been around for a decade and he's hosted Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro and the Weinstein brothers mm -hmm. and Dave Rubin and Crowder and we've had these conversations over and over and over again. Every single American who is not in that 8% fringe yeah. gets on their knees and says, please leave me alone whenever someone comes to them and threatens their job. They will not stand up for themselves that's what i've been saying about what they need to do people need to do something and the first step is telling your boss shut up or i quit but they won't I so video video games get made that are ridiculous that have insane plots and insane ideologies people complain about it they get called nazis in the press yep and the regular people know it's crazy they're watching their cities burn down and then what happens when they rip down thomas jefferson nothing you're and right the democrats in new york city are, are, are calling now for thomas jefferson to be removed from the new york city council chamber and where are our politicians where are the regular americans the silent majority to stand up and say we'll be silent no longer nowhere to be found what are they going to do they're going to go in the voting booth and say i'm going to pull the lever for trump who in the past four years has been unable to stop any of this we've had a great economy a lot of people made a lot of money and what's happened it's been worse so here's what i think is going to happen if joe Bi if trump wins the left will go insane and burn it all to the ground and regular people will hide in their homes with their newly found love of guns and they'll say oh no what do we do and the left will probably gain tons of ground and go insane and people will say please leave me alone and if joe biden wins they'll take over all our cultural institutions they'll put psychotic and insane definitions in our dictionary and they will take over and regular americans will say please for the love of god just leave me alone and they never will they'll never stop coming they will take your job away they will come for your parents you will you will do something wrong they'll fire your mom they'll 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 come to your house with fireworks and guns and americans will still just say please just leave me alone and that's how it is even in the revolutionary war most people the largest majority of people were non-initiated there was a small faction saying no revolution there was a larger faction saying revolution and the bulk said please just leave me alone so long as we've been go when dealing with the psychotic cancel culture. And I've been hearing about people like James, James Lindsay saying this and Coleman Hughes saying, I get messages all the time from people saying, this is insane and must stop. Well, where are you to stand up at your job and tell your boss to shut up when he says, I'm going to put out this brand, this bland brand message that panders to these lo woke lunatics. Where are you to say, if you do that, I quit. They say, fine, quit. Okay, I will. And I'll go start my own company. Nowhere to be found. So we have these conversations and what happens? I'm under threat from being banned every single day. I just had a video today labeled as hate speech. And when I asked them to overturn it, they said, not this one. You're on, you're, on, you're on thin ice, but don't worry, Tim, you mostly play by the rules. We're okay with what you say. So how long until they cut my channel off? And they've been doing it over and over again for the past several years and no one, is, people are nowhere to be found. Now, of course, they go online and yep. they'll post things. But then when it comes to their real, real life job, when it comes to the woke mob coming for them, they just bend the knee and they beg, beg, please, please, woke lunatics, just don't hurt me and I'll leave you alone. I'll let you have whatever you want because I don't care about the future for my children. I don't care about where this country goes. I don't care about all the statues they, they, they've just destroyed. And then what happens? The Republicans, nowhere to be found. You're absolutely right. I have no confidence in any of these people to do anything. I can sit here all day and guess what? Smack talk me all day and night. Say, Tim Pool, all you do is complain about things. You're completely right. But at least I quit my job when I worked for Disney and they said, lie to the public. I said, fuck you. And I, I told them, cut my contract off. And they said, no. Welcome to the golden handcuffs, Tim. You got one more year under lock and key. 
And then I said, okay, well, I'm not going to do what you want. And then finally it came to August and I said, bye bye I'm going to go do my own thing. And guess what? It worked. So where the fuck is everybody else? Nowhere to fucking be found. Congratulations, weren't demonetized. I don't give a shit at this point. You know no what? one is doing anything. And for years, I've routinely said, you need to stand up for yourself and tell these people to back off. And you won't do it. Maybe you guys will, but most people won't. So there's people online complaining all day and night. Yep. Okay, walk away. Stop. They won't do it. So why should I have any confidence after a decade of this? Yep. I'm willing to walk away and go live in the woods when all, when all this just falls apart. I, I walked away from working with a Disney company that was offering to pay me fat cash if I just played ball. Yep. And I said, no, I won't do it. And you know, they, you know what they did at that company? They called me a white supremacist. The white people at this company who are getting fat cash from Disney called me, the mixed race guy, the white supremacist. Yep. And I didn't care. I said, dude, you know, man, my worst case scenario is I go and skate and mind my own business. Why do you? Mm. <laughs> Look, it's, uh, <laughs> it's full on. And as I said, guys, America's deteriorated that far. And that's. You know, you can lose if you do nothing. And uh, and if you if you sit on your hands, this is what's going to happen, guys. That's a funny thing. It's funny watching that because I understand exactly what he's saying. Um, and to a point, he's exactly right. Too many people do sit on their hands. And it, I'll rant and rave at... Uh, it's not the average people that get me going. It's the um, it's the Peter Credlins, the Andrew Bolts, the, the uh, Alan Jones and Paul Murray who pretend to care, but don't. Not enough. Because the average punter can't start their own job. You just can't say, go write a screenplay, start your own business. You just can't do that because not everyone, it's not in them. Not everyone can be a soldier. Not everyone can be a lawyer. Not everyone can be a surgeon. Not everybody can be an accountant. Okay, there are, there are just, we, we are designed and optimised and have natural predispositions to certain behaviours and skill sets. You know, physically, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, and spiritually, we're all very different, and we're optimised for a role in life. So telling people to quit your job, yeah, okay, got it, got it. The the, the poor kid with his bride and a, and a two-and-a-half-year-old, they're working two-and-a-half jobs, and they're barely making it ends meet. You know, we get, and these are the people that I love so much, we get donations from people, five and ten dollars. That's our most common, twenty if you're lucky. Now, we get bigger ones, but very few. And these people, that's all they can bloody afford. Like that 74-year-old sweet young thing that gave me a call. You know, 10 bucks. Brilliant. Thank you. I got this gift from my wife. It's a, it's a crucifix. Let me just get it off for you because this, this tells a story. It's a crucifix. And that's it's quite lovely. But in the centre, you can see a a dark, what looks like a dark coin. Now that's a mite from the time of Jesus in, the, in, in, in Palestine. And for those of you who might remember the story, Jesus was sitting out the front, standing at the front of the temple with the disciples. And they were watching people give their contributions to the temple. You know, rich people putting lots of money in. And this widow wandered up and she threw in a mite. One of these coins is the equivalent of a cent, basically. And this is an actual night. And uh, the disciples allegedly scoffed at how little she put in, and, and, and Jesus said, no, she put in more than everybody else because she had least to give. And there's a profound lesson in that, folks. Everybody, everybody's got to pay one way or another. You've got to give what you can. Now, if you can't quit your job, I get that. I really do. Uh, but A1 is supported by the most profoundly decent, kind, generous, tough people. And they will give $5, $10, $20. And the, and, the, and the phone goes off, bing, bing. And I love hearing it because there's another 20 bucks, another 20 bucks, another 5 bucks, another 10 bucks. And as I think I mentioned a couple of weeks back, a woman put in 100 and a half. <laughs> she rang up and said, can I have it back? My husband growled at me. Couldn't afford it. And we're fine with that. That's absolutely fine. We, don't, yeah. we get it. Yeah. But everybody's got to pay. We want to save this country. Do what you can. I told you the story about the, the, uh, the lovely old dear that rang up. She said, I can't be a politician. I said, can you make lamingtons and coffee? She said, absolutely. I said, great. <laughs> There's a job for everybody, but do what you can because what he says is dead right. Now, once again, I'm really optimistic. We won't get everybody, but we will get enough. Mm. And we only need enough to win this country back. And I mean it. We only need enough, and we will.
this veneer of, of power that the politicians, the judges, the coppers, it's just a veneer. It's, it's wafer thin. You, you poke it with your finger and it falls apart. Yeah. And so there you go, guys. He's right, but he's wrong. We will win. We will win. Mm. We have the people in Australia who can do this. Yeah. And uh, we don't need everybody. We just need enough. Mm. And we're getting them. I'm looking forward to this tour of Queensland. I think it's really going to help. Um, a lot of people have been donating, um, I think, to both of us, actually, this last four, this last week, individually, but both of us. And that's where the money is going right now, guys. We really want to get up there and spread the good news. We want to meet all the two million people or so people around the country, all the faces. I'm sure there'll be uh, tours down the line in the next few years for all the other states. Yeah, absolutely. We're doing, as I said, Queen, uh, northern New South Wales and Queensland for the next five weeks. Uh, take a short break over the new year and then we'll start southern New South Wales and either Victoria or South Australia depending on which state is open. Mm. Vic probably if it's open they need they need more oh. help than most. Oh yeah. So that'll be January, February and then uh, March, April will be Adelaide and WA and NT. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of enthusiasm, oh, yeah. a lot of support, the words getting out there and man last night the NT one. The black guy and the white guy side by side and the and the four of us was myself, my wife and and, and these two key people were having a chat. Mm. And goodness me, I've got to tell you, it was uh, it was it was a love fest. Yeah, it's just course. online, just just decency, mm. uh, bringing it all together. That's awesome. Now, if I've had a number of people in Western Australia of all places, I I don't know anyone from Western Australia except uh, a lot of the ones that have been reaching out. I mean, special mention to you, Jasmine. You're doing a phenomenal job over there, and I get it. It can be daunting, you know, not having people around you, but that's going to change once you start seeing. And that's why we want to have these events so you can show we can show you. It's not just. You. This is the magic of Nigel Farage that we saw last week and also Donald Trump. Mm. Pennsylvania. 50,000 people at a march. Phenomenal stuff. Oh, there's no... Oh, we can do it. We can do it. We can do this. Absolutely. We can, oh, we can do this. Yeah. And guys, uh, you know, Ricardo's going to be speaking at the Freedom Day march in Brisbane. So that's going to be great. So I am looking forward to this very much. Let's end it there, guys. Continue to support the show. Thank you again to the donors of the show. You, you make this possible. And uh, I will see you guys next week on the Ark on the road. Thank you, Ricardo. Thanks, Joel.